The Secret of the Rosary, Part 20, 38th Rose, A Bishop's Devotion. A Spanish countess who had been taught the Holy Rosary by St. Dominic used to say it faithfully every day with the result that she was making wonderful strides in her spiritual life. Since her one and only thought was how she might attain to perfection, she asked a bishop, who was a renowned preacher, for some practices that would help her become perfect. The bishop told her that, before he could give her any counsels, she would have to let him know the state of her soul and also what religious exercises were. She answered that her most important exercise was the Holy Rosary, which she said every day, meditating on the joyous, sorrowful, and glorious mysteries, and that her soul was greatly helped by so doing. The bishop was overjoyed to hear her explain what priceless lessons the mysteries contained. I have been a doctor of theology for 20 years, he exclaimed, and I have read many excellent books on various devotional practices, but never before have I come across one better than this for it is of the essence of Christianity and is a devotion which cannot but bear fruit. I shall follow your example, and from now on I shall preach the rosary. The bishop's preaching met with great success, for in almost no time his diocese changed for the better. There was a notable decline in immorality and worldliness of all kinds, as well as in gambling. There were several striking instances of people being brought back to the faith or sinners making restitution for their crimes and of others sincerely resolving to give up lives of vice. Religious fervor and Christian charity began to flourish. These changes were all the more remarkable because this bishop had been striving to reform his diocese for some time, but with hardly any results. To better inculcate devotion of the rosary, the bishop also wore a beautiful rosary at his side and always showed it to the congregation when he preached. He used to say, My dear brethren in Jesus Christ, I am a doctor of theology and a doctor of canon law, as well as civil law, but I say to you, as your bishop, that I take more pride in wearing Our Lady's rosary than in any of my episcopal regalia or academic robes. 39th Rose Parish transformed. A Danish priest used to tell how the same improvement that the Spanish bishop noticed in his diocese had occurred in his own parish. He always told his story with great rejoicing of soul because it gave such glory to Almighty God. He said, I had preached as compellingly as I could, touching on many aspects of our holy faith and using every argument I could possibly think of to get the people to amend their way of life. But in spite of all my efforts, they went unconcernedly about their way as before, and it was then that I decided to preach the Holy Rosary. I told my congregation how precious it is, and I taught them how to say it. I kept on preaching the Rosary, and the devotion took root in the parish. Six months later, I was overjoyed to see that people had really changed for the better. How true it is that this God-given prayer has divine power, the power to touch our hearts and to fill them with horror of sin and the love of virtue. One day, Our Lady said to Blessed Ellen, Just as Almighty God chose the angelic salutation to bring about the incarnation of His Word and the redemption of mankind, in the same way, those who want to bring about moral reforms and who want people reborn in Jesus Christ must honor me and greet me with the same salutation. I am the channel by which God came to men, and so, next to my Son, Jesus Christ, it is through me that men must obtain grace and virtue. I, who write this, have learned from my own experience that the rosary has the power to convert even the most hardened hearts. I have known people who have gone to missions and who have heard sermons on the most terrifying subjects without being in the least moved. And yet after they had, on my advice, 
started to say the rosary every day, they eventually became converted and gave themselves completely to God. When I have gone back again to visit parishes where I have given missions, I have seen a tremendous difference in them. In the parishes where people had given up the rosary, they had generally fallen back into their sinful ways again. Whereas in places where the rosary was said faithfully, I found the people were persevering in the grace of God and were advancing each day in virtue. 40th Rose Admirable Effects Blessed Alan, Father Jeanne de Mont, Father Thomas, the Chronicles of St. Dominic, and other writers who have seen these things with their own eyes speak of the marvelous conversions that were brought about by the Holy Rosary. Great sinners, both men and women, have been converted after twenty, thirty, or even forty years of sin and unspeakable vice because they persevered in saying the Holy Rosary. And these have been people who, beforehand, have been deaf to all pleading. I shall not tell you about those wonderful conversions here because I do not want to make this book too long. I am not even going to refer to those which I have seen with my own eyes. There are several reasons why I would rather not talk about them. Dear reader, I promise you that if you practice this devotion and help to spread it, you will learn more from the rosary than from any spiritual book. And what is more, you will have the happiness of being rewarded by Our Lady in accordance with the promises that she made to St. Dominic, to Blessed Alan, and to all those who practice and encourage this devotion, which is so dear to her. For the Holy Rosary teaches people about the virtues of Jesus and Mary, and leads them to mental prayer, and to imitate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It teaches them to approach the sacraments often, to genuinely strive after Christian virtue, and to do all things of good, all kinds of good works, as well as interesting them in many wonderful indulgences which can be gained through the rosary. People are often quite aware, unaware of how rich the rosary is in indulgences. This is because many priests, when preaching on the rosary, hardly ever mention indulgences and give rather a flowery and popular sermon which excites admiration but scarcely teaches anything. Be that as it may, I shall say no more than to assure you, in the words of Blessed Alan de la Roche, that the Holy Rosary is the root and the storehouse of countless blessings. For through the Holy Rosary, first, sinners are forgiven, second, souls that thirst are refreshed, third, those who are fettered have their bonds broken, fourth, those who weep find happiness. Fifth, those who are tempted find peace. Sixth, the poor find help. Seven, religious are reformed. Eight, those who are ignorant are instructed. Nine, the living learn to overcome pride. And ten, the dead, the holy souls, have their pains eased by suffrages. One day Our Lady said to Blessed Alan, I want people who have a devotion to my rosary to have my son's grace and blessing during this lifetime and at their death. And after their death, I want them to be freed from all slavery so that they will be like kings wearing crowns and with scepters in their hands and rejoicing eternal glory. Amen. So be it.